Thank you for clicking on this video. This is I, Seth Kills, otherwise known as Nick. And today, we're going to be talking about Obi-Wan, Season 1, Episodes 1 through 6. This is not going to be a play-by-play. -play. However, we're just going to be talking about characters and some things I liked, some things I didn't like, and kind of take it from there. And I've been a little bit reluctant to watch this series, formally, solely because uh, I'm, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I love this the, the original trilogy ever since I was a kid and fell even more in love with it when the Force Unleashed game came out on uh, consoles. And to be honest, <clears throat> that was probably one of the best adaptations of Star Wars I've ever seen in a video game and even story. Uh, I love the whole, you know, Star Killer being the apprentice of Darth Vader and basically Sith becoming Jedi storyline. So if you haven't played that game, that game is awesome. I definitely suggest that. But I've been a fan of uh, Star Wars forever. So I really was afraid of what they were going to do with the characters um, in this series. And to be honest, some of the things that I was afraid of didn't in fact come true. But I did get some enjoyment out of watching it. Uh, I can say that. Um... Hayden Christensen, um, when he was on screen, did a very, very good job. Uh, I wish there was more of him in, in you know, the series. I mean, he only had like a few flashbacks, maybe a total of maybe six, seven minutes uh, total on screen. But every minute, uh, I did enjoy him. Um, he did a very good job of what he was given. Um, Ian McGregor. Um, he did a good job as far as he was given, though. I don't like what they did with his character. Um, they did the whole trope where the hero loses his ability, his powers, basically. You know, the whole Superman, Spider-Man thing, you know, that's done in many movies and shows. They did it again in this one. And he's very unsure of himself, very timid, doesn't want to get involved. You know, he's even approached by a Jedi, and a Jedi asks him for help. And he says no, that he doesn't want to get involved, and even suggests to the Jedi that he should throw away his lightsaber in the desert and bury it and try to live a normal life. And I don't like that. I don't like that they did the whole Luke Skywalker thing, throwing the whole, you know, lightsaber behind his back thing. Uh, I really wish they did something different, like maybe, you know, just like any martial artist or priest or monk, you know, he would have, he would have been practicing still. He would have been still powerful in the force. I don't understand why they made him weak again, but, you know, they had him make him go through a struggle, I guess, but I honestly wish the struggle was something different, um, but this is what we got. Um, Ian McGregor did the best with, you know, what he was given, though. Um, Reva's character was a little bit confusing uh, to me, to be honest. She was a youngling that survived Order 66 and became an Inquisitor just to get close to Anakin to, I guess, kill him. But the reason why it confuses me is because if somebody is trying to get revenge you know, for killing younglings and Jedis and, you know, people who have force powers, why would you, you know, do something to kill people with force powers and younglings just to kill the person that did that to you, basically? So her character was a little bit confusing. Um, the Grand Inquisitor, I did not like. Um, his voice, uh, his whole persona... Played off kind of like a, you know, pompous, rich guy who's overly confident. Not like an evil, menacing, almost Darth Vader type, which is what the Grand Inquisitor is supposed to be. <clears throat> the adaptation in Rebels was so much better um, than the live-action version, in my opinion. But uh, we get what we get. Princess Leia, uh, I did enjoy her presence on screen. I thought the actress that played her did a good job. Um, I did enjoy the relationship between, you know, Obi-Wan 
and uh, her like kind of playing off as a father daughter relationship towards the end of the series. I did kind of enjoy seeing that relationship grow into that, but I honestly wish we got a little bit more of Luke because you know, obviously it, it does kind of ask some questions because Leia didn't act too upset when Obi-Wan died in New Hope. But, you know, obviously maybe the writers didn't watch the movies. I don't know. Um, I also heard we, we actually don't get Darth Vader. Like, we don't get James Earl Jones's voice. Um, we actually get an AI robot's voice, which... I mean, I did enjoy the scenes we get with Darth Vader and, you know, the dialogue. I mean, it did portray well on screen, seeing um, the black mask again, seeing the red lightsabers, you know, hearing the breathing. It did um, spark up some nostalgia feelings for me. So, although I wish James Earl Jones did voice the character, I think it would have been a lot better. So... Uh, the character who played the fifth brother, which is Sun Kang, uh, I thought he was probably the closest thing to an actual Inquisitor to what they're supposed to be. You know, menacing, trying to gain more power, you know, very loyal to the person in charge. Kind of a kiss-ass, almost, you know, um, you know, because he's trying to move up in rank. But I did enjoy how he acted out the character. Um, Oshaya Jackson, who played Junior, uh, played a character, you know, normal guy, just trying to do what's right, trying to protect the Jedi because he knows that the Jedi protects the normal person. So I, I did uh, jo enjoy his character a little bit. Um, Kamali Najani, he plays this fake Jedi that helps people, but he gets paid. He takes money from the people who's helping to get off planet, but he gains their trust by pretending to be a Jedi. So, I don't know. For some reason, Obi-Wan really trusts him, though, <laughs> by the end of the series. So I wonder what they're going to do with his character in Season 2. Um, Joel Egerton does come back to reprise his role as Owen, and I thought he did really well. Uh, I enjoyed seeing that he really cared a lot for Luke and enjoyed knowing that Luke was brought up by a loving family. You know, it wasn't like a broken home or anything. Like, they really cared about him. So I did enjoy um, what he brought to the character. Uh, we get uh, Jimmy Smith's back playing Senator Organa. I did enjoy seeing him back on the screen playing and reprising his role. So um, let's talk about some of the fight scenes. Um uh, the first couple fight scenes, because Obi-Wan was pretty weak and not powerful, was a little hard to watch. Um, the lightsaber battles was poorly choreographed, in my opinion. But I did enjoy seeing how they used the force powers and how they used the surroundings like rocks and boulders and used them as weapons and used, you know, throw it at each other, basically. So I did enjoy some of the things about the fight scenes. I uh, really wish they paid a little bit more attention on lightsaber work. I understand the actors <clears throat> are a little bit older, but you know, just like in John Wick, you know, if you took your time in the choreograph of the fight scene, I think they, you know, could have done a better job. But <clears throat> I did enjoy seeing the blue and red lightsabers going at it, um, as unorthodox as they did it. I did enjoy hearing it and seeing it. Um, the whole, you know, storyline, you know, with Princess Leia being kidnapped and being used to bring out Obi-Wan and Reva using Obi-Wan to get close to Darth Vader storyline. I really wish they approached something different, to be honest. Um, really wish it, uh, they thought of something a little bit more, uh, you know, appealing or provoking. Um, like maybe Obi-Wan having a, you know, difficult time protecting Luke because of the Inquisitors always coming after uh, Luke and trying to keep that a secret and needing help from other Jedis. 
Um, and then some way, you know, obviously because of the amount of help he needs, they detract from trying to get Luke and figure it out somehow that Leia is, you know, part of Luke's lineage somehow, not knowing that it's his twin, but just knowing that they're close in relation and sends, you know, inquisitors after her and Obi-Wan has to, you know, split up a team of, you know, rusty Jedi's that he has been gathering over the 10 years. Um, and has to, you know, separate his team to protect Leia as well, undetected. Um, I don't know. I just think that they could have created something a little bit better, you know? Um, and I think the, the person who played the inquisitor, um, was probably a bad casting, maybe not so much the actor, maybe just maybe the direction of how he was told to act. I don't know. I hated the voice of the character. I did enjoy, I, I forgot to talk about Tala. I did enjoy Tala's character. Um, I hated the way she died, but I did enjoy, you know, how much she cared about, you know, people and how much she, you know, cared about Obi-Wan. And, um, I don't, I don't, it almost seems like they had maybe something romantic in the past, but maybe even she was a, maybe former Padawan, you know, or maybe closely linked to the Jedi somehow, but you can obviously tell there's some history there, but uh, I don't know. Um, I guess the series as a whole, I would probably give it maybe a six, a little bit above average, solely because I did enjoy seeing some of the fight scenes, even though they were poorly choreographed. I didn't like seeing the whole battle between Sith and Jedi again. Although I did wish, you know, Obi-Wan through episode one all the way to six was at full strength and was dealing with some other type of struggle, you know, but I, I mean, it did entertain me, you know, you know, watching it. So I got to say that for the, for the show. Um, curious to see what's going to happen in season two. I wouldn't say I'm excited, but this show watching this season has got my curiosity peaked a little bit just because it was slightly entertaining and with all the shit that we get today seeing a slightly entertaining show is a lot better than seeing something like rings of power or she hulk which is un almost unbearable to watch but anyways guys uh, i would say that is my opinion on obi-wan we'll see what happens in season two hopefully they get a little bit better with the fight scenes and the choreography and then also come up with a better story for this next uh, season but we'll see anyways guys if you did like the video please hit that like and subscribe button and i'll catch you in the next one